What's up, guys? My name is Juan, and you're watching my channel, Blueprint PC. So, 2020 sucked, 2021 sucked, and the graphics card market still freaking sucks. But we might have a stopgap solution. But first... This video is brought to you in part by Enermax. Enermax is a leading manufacturer of high-performance PC hardware, including their well-built, budget-friendly Cyberbron and Marble Bron series of power supplies, along with their new Lickmax 3 series AIOs, now available in white. For more information, please check out the link in the description below. All right, guys, so we all know the market sucks. It really does. 2020 sucked, 2021 sucked, as I've already said. And, you know, the graphics card market is horrible right now. Chip supplies aren't looking like they're gonna improve anytime in the next year or so, even though the companies are saying they're seeing the light a little bit. Crypto is kind of up and down. It's gone through some peaks. Right now it's in a valley. So that's kind of a you know a nice help to try to find something at a closer to normal price, but doesn't mean you will be able to find it at anywhere near normal price, just slightly less than crappy. Um, with that being said, Nvidia is talking about 4,000 series already. They're like little murmurings coming out about it. AMD is talking about doing like 50 series cards, like 6950X, 6750X, T, you know, whatever. Even when those cards come out, they're probably gonna sell out and they're probably not gonna have the volume of what's really needed in the market to, you know, to satisfy everybody. So what do you do when you're probably looking at anywhere from like a year, year and a half, or maybe even two, to realistically be able to buy a high-end graphics card for a less than horrible price. Well, you jump towards the classics. One of those is NVIDIA's 10 series. 10 series had a nice middle of the road one that was very stout and it was great for a lot of people, which was the 1070. 1070 had 1920 CUDA cores, had eight gigabytes of GDDR5, not six, but again, remember that's two generations ago. GDDR5 is still pretty decent. The new Steam Deck, I believe, is using GDDR5, well, LPDDR5, whatever it is. Um, so it's not horrible, you know? And yes, normal RAM's becoming five, but whatever. The 1070, you know, being what it is, can knock out majority of your games you wanna play at 1080p. And that's one thing to really, like, kind of drive home here is 1080p. Yes, it's not going to do 4K. I mean, it can do some games at 4K, yes. Probably like Rainbow Six Siege or something like that. But it's not going to do most of your games at 4K. It's not going to do 1440p horrible. It'll do it decently well, depending on the game. Esports titles will do pretty decent with that. But for 1080p, it's comparable to a 1660 Ti. It's actually faster than a 1660 Ti when you come to just normal stuff. It kind of falls between that and a 2060. Maybe even depending on the game kind of breaks in between the 2060 and 2060 Super. So what I have here is actually the MSI Aero, the ITX single fan version of the 1070. So you're gonna have a cooling restriction there, which is gonna hurt your boost clocks, and you're not gonna have all the, you know, kind of power delivery and everything you would normally want to have on a graphics card to make it is just to squeeze as much power out of it as you can. This test bench itself, only has eight gigabytes of RAM in it right now. It's 2666 and it's using a, a Ryzen 5 3400G. So it's Zen Plus, four cores, eight threads. Now you're probably thinking, why the hell would I test it with that? And there's a very valid reason for this because the numbers I'm gonna show you today are going to show you a pretty close to worst case scenario. I didn't wanna do the card any favors and give you guys misleading numbers. I'd rather you see this system perform the way it does and if you have newer stuff which a lot of you guys have bought newer hardware and have better specs on your processor your ram etc and think hey if i bought a 1070 i'm gonna get more than that out of it considering what that is doing and this is all off a of spinning drive and everything else not that it really plays too big of a part on fps but in some games it really does so all these benchmarks were done at high medium and low settings no custom tuning, no tweaks, nothing. There's literally whatever the default, high, medium, low. When I say high, that's not like ultra or badass or nightmare or whatever random setting, it's low, medium, high. So let's check out these numbers. When we get back, we'll talk about it.
Alrighty, before we talk about the benchmarks, a couple quick things. One, I am thinking about pulling that cooler off of there and repacing that with some of the Kingpin KPX, that super crazy high-end thermal paste stuff and maybe overclocking it and see what we can do. I might do that in another video, so hit that subscribe button. So another confession with that card is actually that's been in my VR rig for probably the last nine months to a year and it holds its own. I've had no issues playing VR with that. And if you know anything about VR, it can be very demanding in a lot of different ways because you've got two images and things like that it's trying to relay. And plus, if you're also showing it on the screen, etc., they get kind of abused sometimes depending on the card you're using. So, and that's held its own. I've had no issues. I don't have any like crazy stutters or anything like that or any motion sickness because of like frame droppage and stuff like that. So, nothing to consider if you're into VR. It's also a very competent option for that. Now, not saying you have to buy the first one you see. I don't recommend you buy the first one you see necessarily. If you are looking at used options, please take all steps and measures you can to protect yourself, whether it's you physically if you're meeting somebody or just your financial means at that point in time because there are crappy people out there in all formats, whether it's Facebook Marketplace, eBay, whatever. Find a safe place to meet if you're meeting someone. A lot of police stations have little meetup sections, whatever. So that's something you can check out there. That's personally what I do anytime I buy something used. And if they don't want to meet me there, then I probably don't want to meet them anywhere else. So that's perfectly fine with me. Um, eBay has the buyer protection thing to look at. And again, not saying you should go out and buy this because, you know, it's your choice ultimately what you want to do. But I do think that a 1070 is a viable option for anyone in the market here who's, you know, willing to, again, look at a stopgap option for 300 bucks roughly or a little, little over versus spending 1500 bucks on something that's marginally more performant. Because if you're looking at like a 3060 for $900, you probably wouldn't notice much of the difference between that and a 3060 other than the fact that it doesn't have RTX. But even then, 3060, the RTX on that is going to be very limited. And when you use it, it's going to cripple your FPS because it's still not quite there yet. Just like a 3050, that's going to outrun a 3050 in any game for normal rasterization and things like that. Yes, that doesn't have RTX, but a 3050 will do very, very mild RTX, and that's hoping you're on playable frame rates at that point in time, depending on your resolution. So outside of that, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you found something useful. If you did, hit that like button, and yeah, hit that like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.